Hello and welcome to another episode of the Talking Rangers podcast. Today is Friday, March 15th. This is episode 24 of Talking Rangers. We've got a lot to discuss. It has been now officially one week since the NHL trade deadline. The Rangers are 3-1 and one since the deadline falling last night to the Tampa Bay Lightning 6-3. to three. Uh, Frustrating loss, but it's only one game. Rangers prior to that were coming off of a massive win against Carolina on the road. Joe, tough one last night, but they'll look to bounce back this weekend. Got a lot to discuss. How's it going, man? It's going good, you know. Um, getting down to like the last stretch of games, so it's kind of like a weird period where we already know we're going to make the playoffs, and it's kind of just – I mean, obviously these games are important. You want to play well and yeah. win the – end up winning the Metro. I think they will, but again, they only have four-point leads – or four-point lead on the Hurricanes, but it's kind of like a weird part of the season, like I said, where – there's really not much they're playing for and they know they're in. So kind of just waiting for the playoffs at this point. Yeah. It's um, this point this, this time of year, it's almost like, you know, a lot of specifically this, you know, hockey, basketball and, and baseball, you see not really football uh, more. So the other three sports where you see 82 game season, 162 for baseball, it's like August is the dog days of summer. This is also kind of, I guess, if you want to say nearing spring, like the dog days of, of, of March, I guess it's most of the teams that are eliminated, you know, they're eliminated. Of course, you've got some teams on the outside looking in that are playing with a lot more motivation, but for the Rangers, it's, you're just looking ahead of the playoffs, stay healthy, get to that more of uh, that Monday, April 15th game against Ottawa, finish that out and then put all your focus into the postseason after that. So with the season we've had hope, you know, good thing. Luckily we don't have to worry too, too much about in or not. This team is definitely going to make it. It's just a matter of, who they'll play in the first round. And of course, you know, Carolina is still lurking there as a potential team to jump them. But of course, the win on Tuesday certainly helps the Rangers' chances of coming away with the division. So we'll discuss that and much more. But we'll start with last night's game because that's obviously what happened uh, the earliest or the what's happened the closest to this episode. And we'll d- dig into some of the other games, some of the players so far. Igor, of course. But last night, this is going to be relatively a positive episode because there is a lot of good things to talk about this Ranger team. But last night was definitely a a frustrating loss. It's one of those losses that at the end of the day, it's just one loss and it's just another game. It's just a Thursday night in the regular season. But the way they lost the game was frustrating. You have Braden Point going out there, obviously, with the hat trick. uh, Lightning scoring four unanswered after Jack Roslovic scored his first goal as a Ranger to open up the third period. What was your takeaways from this one? You know, the Rangers blew two leads in this one, two to nothing in the second period. They blew that lead and then they blew the three two lead where they jumped out to the quick start in the third. So what was your reaction? What did you feel went wrong here for the Rangers after they got off to such a quick start in both the first and third period? Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty simple, dude, like turnovers. Yeah, especially like at the um, at the blue lines. It was bad. I thought that. um I think Lafreniere had a bad one, um, but I think that was in the second period. But still, Brzezinski had a bad one. Uh, kind of that that kind of got them back in the game, where it was two nothing, and then those two goals off turnovers kind of let the Lightning back in the game. And then again, they played really well. I thought for the first like thirty minutes, and then they kind of just took the, their foot off the gas. Defensively, it was bad. Like too many. Uh, opening too many opening guy, open guys in the offensive zone thought they weren't getting to loose pucks. Um, and once they kind of got into that running gun game, the I feel like the Lightning's like top guns kind of took over. As you mentioned, point had hat trick six points. Um, Kucherov had five points. So you know can't take penalties against this team too. I mean I, they scored a four and four. I think that kind of helps them too. And then obviously they scored the uh, power play goal, the go ahead goal, but. Just thought like not being disciplined at the blue lines and then the defensive zone. Yeah, you like you mentioned that it's that core of players. It's point Duclair or um Stamkos, Kucherov, and of course Duclair, who they added at the deadline. But you know, just looking at la- what we say. I thought he looked good. Yeah. No, yeah, he did. And and looking at that, you know, just looking at the way their lines are, it, it, that top six is so dangerous. I mean, all those goals last night came from guys within the top six, of course, Stamkos, second line left wing. Mm-hmm. Points, obviously, your first line center and Kudrov's obviously your first line right wing and obviously Duclair since the deadline slots and as that second line right wing. So, you know, really four of those 
four of your top six guys outside of Sorelli and Hagel, they were they all were your goal scorers last night. So those two lines are dangerous, and those two lines the Rangers just never really figured out last night. And throughout, I guess these last couple of years, specifically twenty twenty one playoffs where they lost, like or twenty twenty two rather, those first two lines are are dangerous, and you saw that during that series. You saw it last night, but I feel like last night not not really for the Rangers was that that bad. It's more so I think um um the Lightning sending a message that they're still extremely dangerous come postseason time. And I don't know, last night I think is a little bit of, would you be a little worried if the Rangers would to face Tampa first round? Because it seems like they've had our number going back to two years ago where they got knocked out, of course, in the Eastern Conference Finals against them. And then this year, in a game like this where you're winning, they played one of their best periods of the season in the first period. They look great. The Trocheck Panarin goal was phenomenal. And then they fall apart down the stretch. Are you what is Tampa to you like a, a the opposite of the ideal matchup for the Rangers, if that's the way you want to put it? Mm, I don't know. I mean, I think the Rangers are the I, I don't want to say much better, but they're dude, they're definitely the better team. I mean, I think they have more depth defensively. I think they have more scoring depth. Um, I think they can they can go toe to toe, I think, with their top end guys, but it's just, are, are our guys going to come through? That's the only thing. Our top-end guys like Zabanja and Panera could be able to play in that playoff series. Um, but like I was saying, I th- Igor is better than Vasilevsky. Don't get me wrong. He's a great goaltender, but I yeah, think I he's, agree. he's not what he was a couple of years ago. And I think I think I would take Igor. Nothing like Vasilevsky is bad. He's a great goalie, but I think Igor does play, is playing better right now and, and is the better goaltender. But And like especially on our defense, I think it's a huge advantage. Um, one game, obviously not great how they kind of wheels fell off and they lose that game after going up two. but, um, I still have a lot of faith and confidence and especially against a team like the lightning where, like I said, they're kind of depleted a little and def- defensively don't have a lot of scoring depth. Um, a good blueprint blueprint would be what they did first 30 minutes of that game where they gave yeah. the lightning nothing. Um, were coming through the neutral zone really well, the Rangers offensively. And just they look like the superior team, and it looked like they were going to blow them out at one point. I thought so. If they can consistently play that throughout the game, and kind of get a lead, and then not like take your foot off the gas and just focus on defense, but be more defensively conscious. But also, you know, when you go for an offensive possession, go in for it. Um, I think you just need a happy medium of that. And I think they kind of took their foot off the gas in both aspects, defensively and offensively, where they weren't really going for anything offensively, but weren't really locking down defensively. But I think this team can do that against the team like the Lightning. I'm not overly concerned if they have to play them, but it, it's the NHL playoffs. You can lose to any team, so it doesn't matter who you play. Yeah, and sometimes it's, you know, sometimes it's those under the radar teams. Like last year is a great example of nobody saw the Rangers losing to the Devils, especially if they went up 2-0. So you really never know. It's the hottest teams you usually tend to win. Um Obviously, when you look at Tampa, they're loaded with town. And to your point with Vasilevsky, I agree. I mean, Igor's much better than him, but Vasilevsky's definitely a guy that when he gets hot somewhere to Igor, he's already one of the best goaltenders in hockey. But when you look at his numbers overall for the season, he's got a save percentage under 900. He's just a tick below three goals allowed per game. So when you look at his numbers, he's in the bottom of the league. I think he's 30th in goals allowed per game and tied for 38th, I think, in save percentage. So it definitely hasn't been a very good season for him. And that wasn't the reason the Rangers lost, of course, as you mentioned. I mean, you put up three goals. But, yeah, if they play like they played in the early part of that game, and especially to start that third period where you see Roslovic score early on, and it was a minute 48 in, they can beat Tampa. But when you allow Stamkos point, Kucherov, you saw what Duclair was able to do. He looked good. When you allow those guys to take over, when you allow their top six to find that rhythm, it's going to be a long night. And, unfortunately, that was that was the case. Four goals unanswered. And, in the third period. So, you know, at any point, you know, it was, it was interesting because it's crazy just the way this game went. Did you think when the Rangers went up 2-0, did you feel like really good? Did you feel really good when they got on a 3-0? Like at what point in this game did you feel like they're winning this? And then what was the moment where, where you said that this is over? Um, I'd probably say that the yeah. second shift in the second period, where they were just dominating. They're up 2 nothing. I'm like, oh, this game's over. Yeah. They're going to blow them out. When they didn't get that third goal, and um, 
believe Brodzinski made the initial turnover for their first goal. Then I was like, okay, we're still going to win this game, but come on, okay. like let's bear down defensively. Um, even up until I'd say the third goal, the Russell looked to give them the lead. I'm still pretty confident they're going to win. Once they tied the game on that short uh, four and four, then I didn't have a great feeling about it because it kind of felt like the tides were turning because they scored a tie, or they scored yeah they scored a tie, and then they went on that power play, and then once they went on that, I said once they went on that power play, I thought they were going to lose. And then eventually, Stamp Stamco scores. So yeah, it's funny because the early part of this game, it went into my mind a little bit as I was watching with the Rangers dominating so much. He's thinking, does Igor go for another shutout? Because 12 minutes, you know, 10 minutes in there in the third period, there was nothing going on. He was making the saves he needed to make, had that one really nice glove save, and then all of a sudden just the tires fell off. But I will say this, something that I think is, it still hasn't found their full rhythm from, is the power play. Um, it feels like the beginning part of the season, they were, Excellent power, one of the best power play teams. I think when you still look at the numbers, they still do rank up near the top of the league, but it just doesn't seem nearly as consistent. And there was moments in that game yesterday where they had two power play opportunities. I believe the one was when they were up two nothing. They could have kind of sort of put the game away three nothing. It feels like at times this season they've had power play opportunities to put the game away. Uh, you even go and look at the Devils; like they had that opportunity, power play opportunity, to put the game away. They couldn't. The score remained tight. The Devils ended up scoring. Rangers obviously ended up scoring empty net. It doesn't matter, but there's been a lot of those situations. Are you, what do you feel is up with the power play? Are you at all concerned about it? It's been, it has its moments, but it hasn't been as consistent as it once was. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, like the power play has been kind of faltering. I'd say ever since maybe January where they had that bad stretch hasn't been as good as it was say back in October, November. Um, I think they're still like seventh or sixth in the league. Yeah, they're still um, up there. I'm not too concerned. I think uh, I think they'll click it on right when the playoffs start. I, I'm confident enough in the guys on the unit. We know that what they get, what what they're capable of doing, and I think when the occasion comes up in a playoff game where you need to get a big goal, I have faith. I have a lot of faith in the power play. I'll say that more so than maybe even strength, but. I think that that's something that I think one goal or something like if you score early in, the, in a series in a power play, get that power play going. I think you get a lot of confidence, kind of like last year where their power play was clicking. Like they scored four power play yeah. goals in the first two games. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you could say it's concerning, but uh, like I said, you have a bunch of these guys. They've been been through it. They've done it a bunch of times. Um, you have the skill guys all there. So I, I have faith. I think the power play will turn it around, especially in the playoffs. Yeah, and it's I think it's also a little bit and we've we've discussed this a lot even going back to last week with the five on five play. I think it also is you could try and flip it into the positive where they're still finding ways to win even without it being that that productive. And I think that's a good thing because the Rangers for so many years now have been so reliant on the power play. When the power play is not good, they lose games. That hasn't really been the case this year. The power play has been up and down for, like you said, really since January. So about two months now, and they've they went they went on a 10 game win streak during that stretch. You know, they've found ways to win recently here minus last night they went on the road and beat carolina so it's like even though the power play is struggling they're still finding ways to win and last year they were so reliant they had what four power plays in the first two games they didn't score power play the rest of the game or the rest of the series i believe it was against jersey and of course they got smoked so i think it'll look will come around eventually but you know hopefully down the stretch here they can get it figured out because then once playoffs was around at the five on five and power play find its groove that's where this team's really gonna really gonna make that deep run so We'll shift into Igor Shosturkin now, who's been excellent. Um, when you look at the numbers overall in the season, now last night, of course, did let up to five goals. But prior to that, and not all that was his fault. You know, the Brzezinski turnover defensively in front of him wasn't all his fault. Um, but prior to that, he was excellent. Had the back-to-back -back shutouts against Carolina and St. Louis on Saturday. You know, you even go back a little bit more. He had the one, he had four straight games where he only allowed one goal against Dallas, Jersey, Philly, Columbus. It feels like ever since that stadium series game, that like second and third period of that stadium series game, he started to play better and then just found his rhythm from there on out. What have been your impressions on Igor? Because this team is going to go as far as Igor takes them. That's the reality. If Igor's hot, this team can beat anybody. If he's not, then this team could easily be a first round exit. So great to see him playing well, especially here down the stretch where 
there was some concerns earlier in the season. What have been your impressions on Igor recently? Yeah, I mean, um, I don't really, I didn't really look at what his uh, stats were, like his season stats were after last night's game. But I mean, I think he's still around like a nine thirteen, which is incredible. Where he was at, he was at like a eight ninety something, and he was almost three goals a game. Now he's like a two point five, a nine fourteen, which is unbelievable. Um, and if you looked at, I think I tweeted this out yesterday that uh, over or since the All Star break. He's first in every category for a goaltender. He was he's at like a nine fifty something, uh, one point like six goals against. Uh, I think now he's, uh, I think he's seven two and one. I think in his last uh, ten games, um, and he's just been unbelievable. I mean, positioning wise, I mean he's seeing he's seeing pucks through bodies. His glove has been good. Um, confidence with the puck, I feel like going out and playing pucks is he's been on top of that and yeah, he's been the best goalie in the league i think over the last two months and uh if that continues into the playoffs i am very confident in this team just because of him by himself and uh i think that's a scary thing for the league if igor sterkin is playing at yeah. the top of his game yeah I mean, if he's at the top of his game that's where he's the best in the winter that's where he's arguably the best goalie in hockey and when you look at the updated numbers like you mentioned, some of the stuff that we t- that you tweeted out over the last you know six games, over the last 10, 11 games or so. But if you look at his overall season numbers, tied for sixth and win loss record. The two point six zero goals allowed per game is tied for twelve, fifteenth in save percentage out of nine twelve, and then the three shutouts is tied for eighth. And it's crazy to think all three of those shutouts came really in the last you know couple, of, really in the last month. You know, last month all three of those shutouts have came. So the first one was against. The Flames, and it feels like that Flames game really started something. We were all kind of saying, okay, they, you know, beats the Flames. He gets the shutout. They obviously had the stadium series, struggled a little bit early on, but it felt like that was more so just the outdoor environment than him actually struggling. Both goalies had a tough time seeing the puck. And then that stadium series game happened, and he didn't even played that bad from really the second period onwards. And then that Dallas game, New Jersey kept playing well and keeps playing well now. So it feels like that Flames game really kind of just jolted him to where he is now, where he's got a ton of confidence and playing really well. And as long as he's hot, this team's going to go places, but it's just crazy to think like this goalie room is this one, two punch of goalie is you think the best in the league. No, I think I'd still go with the Boston guys, Swayman and uh, Omar, but this is definitely top three. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say so quick. has been awesome. And, Obviously, good job, good job by Drew a couple weeks ago, locking him up long for for another year. Or so, it's been it's been exciting to see Igor play well. Of course, it was a little concerning early on in the season when he wasn't anywhere close to himself, but definitely has gone way back to being himself. So, we move on now to uh, just some of the guys right now. The new trade acquisitions: Wendy and Rosie. The Knicks names, right? Wendy and Rosie, yeah. um, Roslovic and Alex Wenberg, both of it very good. Since the last time we spoke, they were just acquired, didn't play a game yet. Since that point, they've now played four games. Roslovic got his first goal. They've both gone to the point categories, so good to see. We'll start with Roslovic, then we'll go on to Wenberg. Uh, what have been your impressions on him? I have I thought this first line has been better. I thought they actually played well last night. Um, of course, the Roslovic goal was big. Good skater, really good skater. Has been able to take get, get some chances on that. Um, I thought... They've, they've been really good. How, what have been your impressions of him and how he's impacted this first line? Yeah, I mean, I think he was he's able to bring something that I don't think they had. Um, a north-south player with speed yeah. that can also possess the puck too. So I think he kind of gives that line another gear to its game because, I mean, Mika can possess the, possess the puck pretty well, but he's not a great speed skater. Kreider can't skate with the puck, but he's fast. Yeah. Um, but I think Roslovic can go through a rush in the neutral zone, bring get a lot of speed, and kind of dictate the play and kind of carry it a little. So I think that's something that definitely helps out that line. Um, but no, yeah, he's been awesome. I think uh, this could go down as one of the more under radar moves at the deadline that turns to be turns out to be one of the best moves, and I've liked what I've seen seen out of him so far. Yeah, the Rangers, when they went out and made these moves, were hoping it was 2022 type moves. They were hoping Roslovic is their next, you know, Vetrano and early signs already probably is even better than what Vetrano was. And obviously, it's only four games it's been. He's still got a lot more games left, still got the entire playoff. So 
he can't jump to conclusions just yet. But if he continues to play like this, I mean, Mika scored a five on five goal with him. So he's got to be doing something right because Mika finally scored. And then Mika is now wearing a fishbowl, which is crazy. The amount of players on the Rangers this year wearing fishbowls. What is it? So it's, it's Mika, Mika, Lindgren, VC, Gaudreau, VC. The yeah. five. Lindgren have, I think Lindgren had a fishbowl. Yeah, so it was Lindgren, Gustafson. Yeah, Lindgren, Gustafson. VC, v- Gaudreau, Mika. Gaudreau, Mika. Yep. Anybody else? I don't think so. I would not be surprised if Rempe, once he comes off his suspension, one of these times he's going to have a fishbowl. He's got to. No, I think it's too tough. Too tough for that. Too tough for a fishbowl? Yeah. Dude, Mika was so close to getting a fishbowl before five and five goal. One game apart, two games. One, yeah. yeah, two games apart. Close. It's crazy the amount of fishbowls. Everybody, they've all got to wear fishbowls during I feel the playoffs. Like it's a new thing, dude. I don't remember like last like ever people rarely wearing like fishbowls. Yeah, it's very rare. It's, now it's, like a, it, it's a really common thing. Yeah, it's crazy the amount of guys that are wearing fishbowls or having to wear fishbowls this year. Um, who else? Who do you think would be like next up in line for a fishbowl? To join the fishbowl gang, um, yeah, because it's just mm, fishbowls, they're just handing out fishbowls like it's candy. I'm trying to think, I think it's Rempy, he could like bust up his nose in a fight and have to wear it, or bust up his I, mouth. I, I, I could see Schneider, Schneider, yeah, Schneider wearing, Schneider wearing a sh- fishbowl, Schneider rocking the fishbowl. Yep, nothing beats fishbowl VZ. I mean, he's the goat, nothing yeah. Beats, yeah, nothing would be fishbowl VZ. He's number one on the list, maybe fishbowl Rempy. He gets in a fight. They don't pull the fishbowl off. The guy starts punching his fishbowl. I don't know, dude. I think he's too big. I, he, how is he going to block a shot? And I feel like he, he can't get hit in the face either. Yeah. But a stick. The guy. He's well, like, I'm just saying, like, if he got his mouth all busted up in a oh, fight. Maybe. Maybe. It's possible. You know, it's possible. I, we'll see. But, yeah, no, I'll, I'll back to, back to you know, real hockey talk here off of the fishbowl topic. The first line's been much better. Mika, of course, scored the goal. You'd still like to see more. One one five on five goals good, but you can't go another 70 days without a five on five goal. So he's got to continue that consistency. But yeah, Roslovic being that north and south game probably would have been definitely very helpful last year against a team like the Devils. So you hope they can add that speed element and hopefully take down some teams with that this season. Now you move on to the third line. Wenberg's fit in very well. The third line's been solid um all year, really. Even with the rotating centers there, you've had obviously Brzezinski. Um, of course, you had uh, Heedle there for a little bit. Now you have Wenberg, and I think when Wenberg slotted in really, really nice. What have been your impressions on him? Also had a point, actually had a point before um, Roslovic, so he's been good. He, the white stick and the tinted visor is it does look cool. Looks really nice. It's but, clean, um, clean look, clean look, dude. Uh, you know he's been. He's been really good. I think in yeah. the neutral zone, defensively, even like playmaking, I think he's been awesome in every aspect of his game. I mean, he's he's exactly what we were thinking he was going to be. He's came in, be, been a great two-way center, good defensively, and then pretty solid offensively. I think him, Kako, and Cooley have kind of gelled right away. And, you know, they're kind of moving the puck, cycling it pretty well. So pretty excited to see what he can do as a third-line center. Um, still waiting for him to score. I mean – don't think that line scored yet. They might have. Maybe Kako scored, but I think but, Kako scored. I believe it was against. Was it the Devils? I think he scored. But that might have been a power play goal, though. It might have been. Yeah, you're right. So I don't know if they've scored five and five as a unit yet, but I mean they've been getting a lot of chances, playing good defense. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty pleased with what he's been and what that line's been ever since he's been gotten moved to that line. I thought they've been really effective in both ends. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Kako's goal again. That was the St. Louis game. Was power play. They scored. I built yeah, three power play goals in that game. So yeah, yeah, you'd like to see them put one in the back of the net. But he's been very good. Um, I think he's definitely been what what we expected. As good as as advertised, bringing him over at the deadline. Both deadline additions have been really good, and I think that's not too too surprising given the last year, all the expectations at the deadline. We were all so pumped up. They ended up blowing up in our face. This year, it was a little bit more kind of skeptical where it was cautiously optimistic. You felt like these guys have some potential, but we still want to see them. And the early signs through four games have been very impressive. So you hope it continues. You've seen the play elevate. And then that second line, I mean, it just continues to dominate. Trocek is so good. That play yesterday to Panarin, 
who is beautiful. That goal goes in, you think the game's over because the, they were just buzzing at that point. But, I mean, that second line continues to be so good. And with Lafreniere this year being so snake bitten, we could even think of that second line as even better if Lafreniere, some of these pucks, we go in the back of the net. That's the crazy part. They've left some meat on the bone this year. It, it's just so impressive to see what they can do. And you just hope and hope that this carries into the playoffs where Panarin plays this well once the calendar turns to the first round once he hopefully he finds his groove and turns into that legitimate playoff player that we need need him to be because they've been great so they've been they've been excellent what have been your impressions on on that second line continuing to dominate yeah i mean obviously five and five they're the best offensive line it's not even close i mean the way they move the puck and kind of have a feel for each other is pretty impressive i think they have they have a lot of chemistry the those three guys but um yep I would like to see – that's where I'm not trying to be, like, negative, but, I mean, maybe a little bit more commitment to defense when you do have a lead. Mm-hmm. I feel like they get a little too fancy. I mean, even offensively, like, go go get the puck and send it in deep, you know. If, yeah. you're, leading, if you're winning in a game, like, um, like one, two goals up, just get the blue line and get it deep. As, as we saw, like – Brad Zinski made a bad pass at the blue line, got picked off. I actually think Panarin, um, they didn't end up scoring, but I think he sent the pass across and was picked off, went the other way in an odd man rush. So that's something that's my only concern about them. But, I mean, the, their chemistry is amazing. The way Panarin and Trocek kind of go hand-in-hand, where they they pretty much know where the other guy is. And obviously Lafreniere is, has been great for that line too. I mean, like you are saying, hasn't really been burying as much as he should be. And the line could be doing yeah. so much better better i think point wise if he was able to bury more but you can't complain i mean again like it's okay if they're not great defensively if they're going to be able to produce five on five which again they have been let's just see if they can do it in the playoffs that's my only thing is let's wait for the playoffs and see if the same thing is if it's going like that in the playoffs then it'd be unbelievable yeah it's if they continue this it'd be great and yeah panarin sometimes like you mentioned the defense panarin sometimes can have those Sometimes those turnovers in the neutral zone doesn't do a great job getting back. Kind of just, I I don't know if we want to call it lazy, but it's those just boneheaded brain fart types plays where he turns it over. Tries to do too much. Yeah, do too much. And then he's not very quick going back on the other end. It turns into an on man rush and a goal or whatever. So, yeah, they could definitely improve on that. But really, to me, it's just all about the postseason. That's all it's about. Panarin's been great this year, having a huge season. Well, probably you know the best year I think as that he's had as a Ranger, eighty-eight points, well on his way to a hundred-point season. Uh, only four goes away from cracking forty. So many good things, but it ultimately comes down to that playoff hockey. What does he do? Didn't score a goal last year in seven games. That can't happen this year. Hopefully, they're playing a lot more than seven games. And if that's the case, he's got to be playing at the top of his game. But if this line plays like this in the playoffs, and they sure up a little bit on the defense. Plus Igor, plus what we talked about, Rosovic and Wenberg. That's where this team's going to be so dangerous to take down because Panarin, when he's away, it's all back to the core of this team. It's the Panarin, it's Fox, it's Kreider, it's Mika, it's uh, Igor. That's what it ultimately lies on. It's the core of this team. And they, you know, Kreider's been good, obviously, has posting track record. But the biggest question out of the, that group is, is Panarin. And you hope that he can continue this going into the postseason because if he does, that's where this team could go deep. So definitely been a lot of positives. You know, what I was just thinking back to the fishbowl here for a second. Fishbowl, Wenberg, tinted, tinted fishbowl. Let's imagine that. That would be. I think you're muted. My bad. Um, I accidentally clicked that, but um, I don't think you're allowed to. No tint tinted fishbowl. Because I think Ovechkin did that years ago and i think they went away with it so but he would look sick i do like the white stick though like we were saying that the white stick is nasty yeah the white stick is clean it's it's clean it's clean he definitely hopefully some goals coming up here on that white stick would definitely be nice so yeah what do you say white hot he'll get white hot yeah so you move on here to the defense where troop has been out of course two to three weeks but zach jones has filled in and played really well and you know, on Rangers Twitter, there's been some debate, some some certain people out there that have kind of pushed for Zach Jones getting more ice time. 
Lavalette mentioned as well the other day that he's going to try and get him more ice time, give him more opportunities because he's been very good with that golf system pairing. And I don't know. I, I've been impressed with Zach Jones. I, look, I'm not saying he's got to replace Truba, but it does feel like at times kind of that puck moving defense, a little that speed guy. Like I feel like at times he fits a little bit more of what the Rangers need defensively than, than true, but I'm not saying just true, but you know, you can make the argument cool. that Gustafson has been very good as well. Kreider has been very, or uh, not Kreider Miller rather hasn't been very Miller's had a very terrible season, although I thought he's been a little bit better recently, but Zach Jones has been very impressive whenever he's on the ice. It's not very consistent playing time, but when he's out there, it's like he's played consistently. What have been your impressions on Zach Jones? And do you feel at all he finds himself in this this top this six man defense, or do you still feel he's depth? Um, I think he has been good actually the last couple of games. And as like the season has progressed, I think he's stepped in. Um, I think he's been good. I thought he was a mm-hmm. little bad. It wasn't great when he stepped in for Fox originally early in the season. I thought he kind of struggled, but uh credit to him though, as the season has progressed. And obviously, he doesn't play a lot. I nope. thought he came in and spotted in pretty well for the team. Um, I think he's definitely getting more confident. So I think that's definitely a good thing for him and for the Rangers. But as far as getting into the top six, I don't think this year. I think maybe you could see him overtaking for Gustafson next year. Next year. Yeah. I can see that happening. Yeah. I can definitely see it too. And look, I'm not saying he should replace Truba by any means, but it's been conversation. He's replaced him. He's looked really good. Um, ultimately, true was your captain. He's going to be out there. Big hitter guy that's not afraid to to lay the boom, especially come playoffs. You want those type of enforced player, enforced players. Zach Jones, not really that that guy that's going to lay no. a big hit. So you never know. Truby does definitely have the upper hand on that. But you, what you think, about? I was just saying you never know about maybe Jones yeah. lay something out. But you see uh, you see Rubin will maybe get in a game or two here or no? Yeah, I would like to see. I would like to see him. Maybe former team this weekend against Pittsburgh. Maybe we'll see so him. Tomorrow? But you think tomorrow yeah, he plays tomorrow? Yeah. Will you take um, out? Jones? I would like to see him. What is over Jones? You, you think they'll take out Jones? Then I mean, probably. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, but yeah, I know Lavalette said he wants to get him in there. And over this this week was obviously packed with games. You have another back to back coming up this weekend. I'd like to see him in one of these weekend games. Of course, too, you play Tuesday, I believe, against Winnipeg. So they've got some games coming up, uh, a lot of games coming up. They have packed week this week. Then I think they play Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday next week. So it's what? Jeez, so many games. Yeah, a lot of games. So I think it's important to get him in there, rotate a little bit, see what he see what he can do. Yeah. Um, maybe tomorrow they give it to him against his former team in Pittsburgh, maybe potentially. Um, but yeah, I think he should get a game. I, I like to see him. I think he will soon. I think it's soon. I think it's. Because then once Truba comes back, you want to just roll with your your six guys, roll with them, go into the postseason, have all the, you know, if Truba has any rust or whatever from missing two to three weeks, get him some playing time before this, the season yeah. goes out, maybe a couple games to just get under his belt before get back into the postseason. You don't want him cold going to the playoffs. So now's the time, I'd definitely say. Do you, do you have any date that maybe you're circling or when you for, think he might? For Truba or for, for, for Ruben, I, I think tomorrow he's going to play. Oh, yeah. And I, I know that Jones has played well and Lavalette's kind of yeah. praised him, but I think it's more so just to, you know, get him in because, you know, if we we're going to need him to play with injury or anything later in the season or in the playoffs, I think you kind of want him getting at least the very minimum one game, you know, yeah. with the team. So I think tomorrow would be a good opportunity for that. Get him in yeah. against his former team. Game's in Pittsburgh, so I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. This two week stretch feels like the best because this week was packed. Next week's pretty packed as well. And then the Rangers go on this stretch where then they get, I believe after that Saturday game next week, they have three days off or two days off. They get Sunday and Monday off before playing the Flyers that next Tuesday, March 26th. So they've got some time. They've had just a little bit of break there, but March is packed. I mean, they got a lot of games We're squeezing all of them in here before the final, before you get to game 82 against Ottawa. But yeah, I mean, you don't want him to go a whole month and a half without playing a game. And then postseason comes around. If an injury happens, you need him. You don't want him a month and a half cold. So get him out there, get him some action, see what he can do, see what he looks like, see how he fits in. Definitely could see that happening. Um, any other closing thoughts here before we f- do our uh, picks for goal scores for these upcoming games? No, not really. I mean, like I said, they have a lot of games in a short time. Um yeah. 
kind of like that lull of the season where you kind of like we're saying we already know where we're at but uh yeah just got to make sure to stay healthy um play good defense and you know keep ecar going up until the playoffs i think that's pretty much the takeaway is keep growing your chemistry with, like roslovic wenberg and whoever they want kind of meshing with the fourth line um but you know just keep playing well keep playing good defensively i mean obviously they like said that the hurricanes game was arguably the best game of the season where they just shut that team down just commit to the defense but also i think kind of try to improve offensively i mean five and five yeah. there's always i think room for improvement with this team but uh yeah stay healthy yeah and speaking of all the games played i'm just looking at their schedule starting tuesday march 26th the rest of the year they play every other day which is crazy yeah. so they go what their final what is it's it gonna be a rough, rough stretch 15 games or 14 games or is every other day yeah yeah, and then you get obviously a couple days off. What is it? Probably three days off before the playoffs, something like that. Maybe because the season ends Monday. Playoffs will probably start maybe Thursday, Friday. So I, maybe Saturday. Maybe, maybe Wednesday. They off. might even start. They might or even start Wednesday. Wednesday. They might start Wednesday. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's the dog days now. This is where the championship teams separate themselves amongst the rest. You know, it's an interesting team right now. And then we'll get to the goals is the Sabres. They're making a little bit of a run here late. They are. They're playing well. Man, I'm, 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 I'm not they're saying gonna they're going to make it, but they're for a while there, they were dead. They're, They've they're jumped playing. the Devils. They are they're, playing, only, they're playing well, but they're not yeah. going to make the playoffs. They're too far behind. I mean, they're, only, they're only three points back. Mm, I'm know. not saying they will, but it, it's getting a little interesting. Now, the thing is, the Islanders have two games in hand, and the Red Wings also have a game in hand. The Capitals also have two games in hand. So all the teams in front of them, Tampa doesn't matter because Tampa's way ahead of them. But those three teams, Isles, Red Wings, Capitals, they all have games in hand. So that does hurt Buffalo's chances. But make it a little bit of a run. Since the deadline where they got rid of Oposo was the big one and then one other. The average uh, middle stud. Yeah, middle stud. That's it. So, but I'm not, I don't know. I mean, there's any. You see, who, who do you think fills out that final spot in, in the wild card in the East? Oh, it's gonna be tough. I mean, for a while I kind of thought the Red Wings were locked in, but they've lost yeah. like a bunch in a row. Maybe they've lost like seven. six, seven games. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm. I still think they're gonna squeak, and I don't trust the Isles to continue on this trajectory of. I think the Islanders are gonna. Still... They're they're gonna need like perfect goaltending for these for, th for this next month, and yeah. the, they could get it. But if I had to choose, I I I'd, I'd probably stick with the Red Wings. Yeah, I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be Detroit as well. I don't think Washington has enough scoring. New York is just they're they're inconsistent. They're not. I mean, they're so pretty I much just don't see a world where it's pretty much what we're go. saying, and means that that's gonna be the first round matchup for us on the landing. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, I fully expect it. I mean, unless if we jump Florida, which I don't see happening. Yeah. Tampa. It's they're they're tough. They're tough. They're not. I mean, I think after last year, you know, you lose. After the back-to-back -back cups, some people are starting to think, not so much count them out, but they're not the, you know, you see these teams jump them a little bit in the Atlantic, and they're not the top of the league anymore, the top of the division anymore. Um, some people start to say, oh, it's towards the end of the road, but you know, John Cooper and that team, they've they've been good for a while. They're they're not going to go away. So they're they're annoying because the Rangers have faced them a lot, and unfortunately, two years ago painful way to close out the series so hopefully that doesn't happen again but no can't, can't we can't go up to oh can't go up to oh no down oh two down no yeah. really you gotta go down three well you gotta go down oh two like we did against carolina or down three one like we did yeah, against pittsburgh we got we got to be down two games yeah we can't go at what, at what, at what we point can't is, go oh, ahead in series there's, there's got to be a point in the series where we're down two yeah Either that, you know what's funny or three one yeah you know what's funny is during that playoffs like when they got up 2-0, you're thinking to yourself, oh man, this is going to be great. They're going to win. This is easy because all these times we've had to come back and now we're up yeah. and here we are and they blow it. So we really do have to fall down into series. This team, this team can't play with a serious lead. No. Recently, they have been struggling at times holding on to leads or at least they've been making it interesting. So yeah. hopefully that, that changes. But anyway, goal scores coming up for, uh, for this game uh, tomorrow against Pittsburgh. And then we'll go down the list. I'll go. We'll go. We'll go. Vincent Trocheck in his hometown. Trocek? Nah. Dare I say Chad Ruedel? 
I mean, like, what is like? I don't think you can say him because you don't even know if he's gonna play. Yeah, I'll say this: if he plays, that's my pick. All right, it's All a right. stupid pick, but it's not gonna happen. But if he plays, that's my pick. If he doesn't play, which is probably better for my pick, I'll go Mika. He's gonna score another five on five goal. I could Mika see Mika March. Yeah, Mika March. Maybe Panarin. Nah, Mika. I'll go Mika. Mika March is slowly waking up. All right, Sunday against the Isles at home. Um, hmm. I don't know. That's a tough one. I go. Uh, we go Will Cooley. Cooley. All right, I'm going to go out on a limb here. This isn't probably going to be correct, but I'll go Wenberg. Wendy. Go Wenberg. Yeah, Wendy. Wendy four for four biggie bag. I'll go Wendy for Sunday, Tuesday. Against Winnipeg at home. What are we, who are we taking here? I'll go uh, Roslovic. Roslovic? I was going to go Roslovic against the Isles. I probably should have. Uh, Tuesday, we'll go... Tuesday, we'll go Win- Winnipeg. Tuesday. I don't know. I feel like I want to go out. Of, I feel like I got to go with a safe pick here. I pick kind of two wild cards. Mika doesn't score anymore, and Drew is not scoring. Chicago go Kudrow. Kudrow. Ugh. Control. Well, he score again. You think he scored one one goal this year? Hasn't yeah, you scored. think he'll ever score like again? Scored. He'll score in the playoffs. Watch, he'll score in the freaking playoffs. First he'll game score the, the first, yeah, first goal of the playoffs. He'll score and be like, "Good draw. This is why we got him." <laughs> That'd be so <laughs> funny though if he, sc- if he scores the first goal of the playoffs. <laughs> Hasn't scored since like November. Rempy's gonna... off his. What if dare I say Rempy first game off suspension? Comes out. No, why not? Game. All these are wild cards. None of these are going to happen. I'm going to go Rempy. Wait, Rempy so and Ruedel, the odds for that have got to be. So you did so you, you did Ruedel, Ruedel, and then if yeah. he doesn't play, I did Mika. So so Ruedel, if he plays, if he doesn't play, then it's Mika. Then yeah. Isles is Wenberg, and then Winnipeg's Rempy. If he plays, I'd assume he plays. You know, if Rempy doesn't play, this is how you know it's not going to work because these guys might not even play. <laughs> if Rempy doesn't play, <laughs> we'll go. Do Barkley Goodrow. Mm. Yeah, do do a safe pick. Do like a do. Yeah, we'll go. No, VZ. VZ. Him, him, VZ. Okay, I can see VZ. that. Yeah, I'll go him, VZ. That's a safe. That's a guarantee. I mean, if he's wearing the fishbowl. If he's wearing the fishbowl, yeah. So if VZ gets hit in the puck, fair gets hit in the face against the Isles. It's a guarantee because that's first game back with the fishbowl. Yeah, we gotta hope he gets like high sticked. Yeah, high stick. Get high stick. Wear the fishbowl. Score a goal against Winnipeg, and uh, we move. We should do Boston too, just in case we don't have an episode. We'll do Boston. What is that? Uh, Thursday. Thursday. I'd assume we'll have an episode up by then, but just in case we don't, we'll do Boston. Might go to that game actually. So, uh, is it, I think it's in Boston. Yeah, it is. Oh, you're going in Boston? I'm, yeah, I might take a train. No, I think we, we just drive. But um, I think Boston, the Boston. fake garden. Yeah, fuck Boston. Um, this is a tough one. I don't know. We'll, we'll do it. We'll, we'll, all right, you go. You, you go. Let I'll go just... Kreider. Give me Kreider. I got to go with a safe pick. Cried. Uh, I pick all these random guys. I got to go with somebody safe. I got to go with somebody in the top six. Well, I did Mika, but he doesn't score. He doesn't count. All right, I'll do uh, Keandre Miller. Ooh. All right, that's good. I know you're giving some crazy picks, but so yeah, I, I yeah. had to. I couldn't. I couldn't, just, I couldn't just go like Panarin or something. Couldn't just before. go with the boring picks. I was going to say Goudreau, but he, he's never going to. He, he's no nah, Goudreau's never going to score. Game one of the playoffs. I'll game go with the- Goudreau. Yeah, game one of the playoffs, or I'll go with Goudreau and against Ottawa, the last game of the regular season. I'll go with Goudreau. Scores an empty net. Like, yeah, scores an empty net goal. Here's a hot, take, not a hot take, but here's a prediction. There's, I think he'll score again this regular season. I mean, what? There's like I don't know. He's, he's not like, even coming close. There's like what? Uh, Sixteen games, maybe. Uh, his his next goal will be an empty net goal. Probably one hundred percent. It'll be. I think it's going to be prediction empty net against the Senators. Like thirty <laughs> seconds left in the regular season. Good. Good. Drew buries That'd one, so ends funny. the streak, and then it starts. A just hot run a, in the playoffs. He just goes on a tear. Just goes on a tear. Just starts scores. lighting up. First yeah. round against Tampa scores 10 goals in seven games. <laughs> flights of flights of Vasilevsky. Gosh, that would be unbelievable. The, 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 like he he's he leads oh, imagine that. Imagine Gaudreau goes on like a 20 goal tear in the playoffs. 
they, he, I mean, he w- wins the con Smythe. <laughs> oh man. Scores the first goal, scores the game seven winner. He'd be a legend. Like I'm just saying like, you oh. could be the shittiest player possible. And if you score a huge overtime goal in the playoffs, yeah, you'll, you'll if be you score, forever. if you score a game seven goal to win the cup for the Rangers, oh, well, you matter. won't have you'd to be... pay for another meal in New York ever again. Yeah, you'd be a lot. You'd be like maybe the biggest yeah. player in New York. Oh yeah, I've... you will not be able to walk the streets ever again. Barkley Gaudreau too, who is not, and I mean only hockey fans know who Barkley Gaudreau is. If you're yeah, walking downtown that... and you don't know and you don't watch hockey, nobody's gonna like, know who like, Barkley Gaudreau is. I feel like hockey players kind of have a good though, like. How realistically, all these guys could walk in the streets of New York City for the most part, and yeah, not many. they could. The only guy on the Rangers that I could see is Mika, because of his hair, like he's kind of noticeable. Other than like, that, though, if you're you walking think, the streets and you see like you Wendell, Adam, for example, he just looks like an average bro, guy. You think like Adam Fox ever gets noticed? Probably not. No, not really. Barkley like, Gaudreau definitely doesn't get noticed. Oh, like VZ like, doesn't. They're, they're all average people. That's so funny, though, that you could just, like, walk in the middle of New York City. and You can probably the only player that actually, during his playing career, that you walk around Hank. and you would legitimately recognize, yeah, is Henrik. Yeah, I agree. He's probably the only one. I can't think of anybody else. Like, even Panarin, I mean, even though he's a big, big player in the city, it's... He's just a normal guy, right. yeah. He's, yeah. like, 5'10". Like Maybe with his hair, but even now, I feel like less. Yeah, because he doesn't. Uh, have, he's got normal hair dude, now. There's a chance that I could walk by one of these guys and not even recognize him. Yeah, like even Gustafson, Schneider. Like oh no, no, yeah, no. Yeah, Schneider just looks like a 20 year old kid going to a nine to five shift. <laughs> you know, so, he's making a lot yeah. of money for a 21 year old. Yeah, it's sure uh, the, only nine, nine mm-hmm. the only one on this current. The only one on this current team would be Mika. <clears throat> and it may be Trocek because it's like short Italian guy walking the street, got the stash. That, he could like, be that, recognized. Boy. That's like everybody in New York. Yeah, I guess that's everybody. He fits in. Lafreniere is a little bit more noticeable with the stash, but then again, that's just your average. He's average. Like, looks you like your average I, person. Would I fit in with my my Fisher <sighs> playoff beard? The this playoff is going to be the reason, dude. You have to grow. You have, you have to grow one too. That's not happening. Yeah, I can't, you think like. In two months, you don't think you'll have anything on your face. No. This, this is this is over a month. So, hey, we're getting I there. Don't know what... <laughs> we're getting there. This is like Mika five on five goal territory here. It's taking forever. We're getting there. Oh, man. How about this? Who do you think is the most recognized? And we'll close Who do you think is the most recognizable hockey player right now? In the entire league, not just Rangers. Like, just facial, like physical traits of like, yeah, like you're me. walking down the streets in New York or some major city and he walks past you. Who do you think is the most recognizable current player? Oh, dude, I don't even know. Like, even Gretzky, like, I could see you walking down the streets and Gretzky walks past you during his playing career and you yeah. want to notice him. It's crazy. Oh, Thank, dude. Um, I mean, you could say about a couple sports. I mean, there's not. I mean, the guys. There's some guys in the NBA that are big names. That I mean, like Tyrese Halliburton, some guys like that. I mean, even even like Jokic, you could walk past mm-hmm. Jokic. The only thing with NBA is they're like they're seven. They're so tall. They're giant. They stick out amongst everybody else. NHL is not really the case. You know what? Wait, 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 wait. I think it's um, Ovechkin, but the most notable player actually on the Rangers, someone we didn't mention, Brad Rempe. I was gonna say Rempe earlier. Yeah, well, if he's walking down with the two shiners on his eyes, then yeah. Six, you seven. think if you saw Rempy right now walking the streets, yeah, no I'm, no black guy, you would recognize 100%, him? 100%, yeah. yeah. I probably yeah. would, too. I, I mean, I'd probably recognize a lot of these guys, but I mean, the yeah, average we human. Like, yeah. the average human who maybe watches a hockey game every once in a while would have no clue. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would know it was Rempy. Oh, but, can uh, you think? I think yeah, Austin I think Matthews is up there. Yeah, because he got like the really like receded like hairline. Yeah. He's got a huge he's got fucking stash. forehead. That's true. Maybe. maybe. And then McKinnon, oh, he's but, not really anything you know, special. Maybe it's Jack Hughes. It's like all the Ugh. girls love all all the all the puck People bunnies. People pay love. to watch me lose. All the puck bunnies love Jack Hughes. So maybe Jack Hughes around these parts. But if Jack Hughes was in like Los Angeles walking around, I think anybody would know who he is. Uh, you know, you'd be surprised how many freaking girls are obsessed yeah. with Jack Hughes. 
Now, what about this? Who is, do you think, more recognizable? LeBron or Brady? If you were walking the street and you saw LeBron or Brady, who do you think you'd recognize first? Yeah, I would probably say, to me, mm. it's LeBron because he has the beard and he's like 6'8". He's giant. Brady looks like the average human. Like LeBron's jacked, has the beard. You know he's yeah. going to be rocking shades. He, probably LeBron. Like, He's probably going to have his mm-hmm. shoes on. Brady's going to be walking around probably in like just some zip up jacket. Average, you know, average you know, hairstyle kind of slicks a little bit. No facial hair. Your average person. So that's true. Either way, that'll do it. We kind of went off on a tangent here, but that'll do it for an episode of Talk Rangers. As always, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.